What's up guys, I'm Ethan Carter and today we're going to make a leather and wood ping pong paddle for the Rockler Hobby Challenge put on by the Modern Maker Podcast. Now you might be thinking because I'm making ping pong paddles that ping pong is my hobby. I do like ping pong, but I think the real hobby here is taking something that you can buy for $10 that works perfect and making an unnecessary leather version of it that costs three times as much that probably doesn't work as well. Let's get to it. To help establish the shape and details of the ping pong paddle, I picked up the cheapest pair I could find on Amazon to use as a reference. I started by tracing the shape of the paddle onto some cardstock to use as a template throughout the process, and then cut it out with my leather wrapped X-Acto knife. You could of course always just use some magic. For the body of the paddles, I picked up two small sheets of quarter inch plywood. To save time and also maintain consistency between the two paddles, I decided to temporarily attach the two pieces together to do all the cutting and shaping. To do this, I used the blue tape and CA glue trick. You simply lay strips of blue tape down on both pieces, spread a line of CA glue down each strip on one side, spray some accelerator on the other side, and then align the pieces and press them together. Once we're done cutting and shaping the paddles, we can separate the two pieces and simply remove the blue tape and we'll have two identical paddles. Next, I took the template I cut out and taped it to the plywood and traced out the shape. Then I cut out the rough shape on the bandsaw, making sure to stay just outside the line. We'll use the disc sander later to sneak up on that line. For the handles, I decided the easiest way to add shape would be to sandwich the plywood handle portion with some split dowels. To account for the thickness of the plywood and keep the handle perfectly round, I marked out the center section of the dowel that I would need to remove. Then with the assistance of a wood clamp for safety, I again used the bandsaw to cut out the center strip of the dowel. The bandsaw left some rough saw marks on the flat side of the dowels, so I used my belt sander to smooth it out. I again used a clamp to help me do this without getting my fingers too close to the sander. My reference paddle's handle has a slight taper at the top of the handle for your thumb, which makes it more comfortable to hold. So I decided to add a taper to my handles too, using my disc sander. Next, I used my disc sander to clean up the edges of the paddles and sneak up on that line. If you take your time, you can get a really consistent and clean edge doing it this way. I also used my oscillating sander to sneak up on the curved sections I couldn't reach with the disc sander. As I mentioned earlier, once they are cut to size, you can simply pry the two pieces of plywood apart with a putty knife, remove the blue tape, and you have two identical paddle bodies. To attach the handles, I started by measuring how far up they should go, which ended up being exactly 4 inches, which I marked with a piece of blue tape. Since clamping these round handles would be a bit tricky, I decided to use the wood glue for strength and CA glue for a quick bond trick. The wood glue will create a strong bond, and the CA glue creates a quick bond to hold everything in place while the wood glue cures. Once the dowels were attached, I used the reference paddle to determine where to blend the bodies flush with the handles, and then trimmed off the excess handles at the bottom. To clean up the handles and make everything flush, I again used the disc and belt sander. With the paddle structure essentially done, I moved on to adding the leather pads and the wrapped handles. I made another template out of cardstock for the leather pads that will be attached to each side. Then I used my scratch all to trace out the shape onto the leather and cut it out with my X-Acto knife. To 
add a little branding, I used my leather stamp and an arbor press to deboss my logo on one side of each paddle. To attach the leather to the paddles, I used some of Tandy Leather's EcoWeld adhesive. EcoWeld is super easy to use. You simply apply some to both surfaces, wait for them to get tacky, and then stick them together. Once the adhesive was tacky, I carefully aligned the pieces of leather with the edges of the paddles and then pressed them together. I'm making these paddles for my buddy Drew of the channel Fisher Shop, who recently built an amazing foldable ping pong table for his channel for him and his son to play on. So even though he probably doesn't need them, I thought it'd be fun to make a pair for him and his son, and I decided to engrave their names off camera on the paddles as well with my Cricut Maker. Next, I moved on to wrapping the handles with leather too. First, I measured how tall the piece of leather would be, which ended up being three and a quarter inches. Since the top of the handles are wider than the bottom, it makes cutting the width of the leather a little tricky. I started by cutting the leather the width of the widest part. Then I measured the width at the narrow bottom. Next is where it takes a little trial and error to get a perfect fit. I marked where the handle started to get wider, and then connected that to the top wide section with a gradual taper. You basically want the edges to just barely touch to get a nice tight fit. To connect the two edges and pull everything tight around the handle, I used what's called a corset stitch. I started by using my wing dividers to score a stitch line. Then I used my pricking irons to punch the stitching holes. To ensure the spacing between each hole stays consistent as I work my way down the line, I always make sure to place the stitching chisel point furthest to the left in the last hole of the previous set of holes I punched. Once all the stitching holes were punched, I moved on to adding the corset stitch. I made a video dedicated to leather stitching where I go in-depth into the process of how to do this corset stitch and others, and I'll leave a link above in case you want to check it out. But at a high level, I start with two needles secured at opposite ends of the same thread. Then with the bottom of the paddle pointed at you, I take the left needle and stitch down into the next hole on the right, and then back up through the hole parallel to that one on the left side. That creates one half of the cross. Then I do the same thing with the right needle, only opposite. All right, so the last detail I wanna to add to this is some way of covering up the plywood on the edges, kind of like edge banding, but with leather. So my initial thought was to cut a strip and add some decorative stitching to it. I think that would look really, really cool. The problem was is that it was such a thin strip that when I punched the stitching holes, it kind of made them all out of line and the stitching didn't really look clean and I just didn't like the look. So I think I'm just gonna keep it simple and add just a plain strip to the edges. And I think that will look good. To add the small edge banding strip, I again used some EcoWeld adhesive and just carefully applied some to each surface. Then I just started at one end and carefully aligned the strip with the edge of the paddle. And with that, the paddles are done. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting that subscribe and bell button. I also post a lot of behind the scenes and smaller scale projects as Ethan Carter Designs on Instagram, and I would love to have you follow me there as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.